Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How's it going today? I'm in a great mood because the hurricane, well first of all where we're at, it has definitely passed. But then where we evacuated from, it has passed. Now we haven't gotten like on the ground reporting, reporting live from on the ground. We haven't gotten that like from people that we know there yet. But just from the news and stuff, I mean, we can tell that like there's no power where we lived and stuff like that. Now, we did see, and if you're paying attention to the news or if you know the area, there's been scenes of like a trailer park, RV park that was destroyed. That was like a mile away from where we lived. That's where that RV park is, is where we park at to go down to the beach to take the dogs walking. So that was shocking to see because I was just like, oh my gosh. That happened hours before the storm by a tornado. Now, the whole park was wasn't taken out but it was one of those like super cute parks with those little park models and it was right in the beach and it was adorable so I, I just hate it for them uh, but from what I understand like only 20 people live there full time and there was nobody actually hurt so that part is obviously a blessing so I'm filming this it's Friday morning uh, a little bit before nine o'clock we're gonna probably still head home on Sunday because I know that there's no power. There's probably a little bit of flooding and stuff, but the storm really calmed down a lot. So, that being said, I know you're not here for a storm update, but so many of you are hitting me up and asking if we're okay and all that, and I greatly appreciate it. So, what we are definitely all here for, oh my gosh, is day three of the Skyler, Brooks, Skyler, Richardson saga. We are going to mostly be focusing on just those two interview tapes we saw. Uh, and now you know that today, day four, they're going to be showing like the second interrogation, which is where things get really heated, I guess. But these were eye-opening uh, interviews with the detectives and with her parents. So without further ado, let's review. Okay, so now they did have a witness jump up in the stand there early in the day. Uh, Amy Delaris, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. She's a forensic scientist. She was there to essentially just establish DNA that, yes, this was Trans Schuyler's uh, baby. They are the parents. Uh, yes, we did get a DNA swab from beneath the bed, but they could not identify it. It, it was it was somebody else's, but they couldn't get an, you know the identity to it. So there was that. Let's jump into just the heat of the day, though. So the first things that we see is the interview with Detective John Faines, and there was another a lady came in the room. Uh, allegedly, it's like not her her case. She's helping out, so on and so forth. Obviously, it was probably a good tactic to have. They always have two investigators, but to obviously have a female there for this young lady, I'm sure that made her more comfortable because obviously the stuff they're talking about is pretty, you know, not fun and easy to talk to. So I think that that worked well in getting her to kind of open up. But let's just jump right into it. So she walks in and immediately is, you know, am I being arrested? So, and this is a theme that we see through the whole thing. She goes, and I'll get into some of my personal thoughts here in a minute about it, but, you know, they put her at ease at first. You know, we're just regular people. You know, we're here to interview you. We just want to find out what's going on. We see this all the time in, in police interrogations. Now, Detective Faines does something interesting where, and I'm curious if this is real or not or if it was just something that he made up. I mean, he says it was real. But he talks about one of his daughters who had a child really, really young. And, you know, so he basically humanizes himself. And, and I think that that's necessary to get people to open up to them, obviously. So he definitely humanizes himself with this. And he definitely portrays himself as what I imagine, especially after seeing her parents, as kind of the reaction that she would hope for, that anybody would hope for in telling their parents something like that. But, you know, he goes and he acknowledges, like, look, you're 18, you're young, you're scared, I get it so on and so forth now in the beginning he walks her through the act the, the bit about you know these are your rights the, you know do you want to speak to an attorney all that type stuff and she reads these out louds and she signs each one and you know i don't care right wrong and different guilty not guilty take all that away whenever we see these police interrogations and that part is happening i'm always like Ugh. 
uh, I really hope you're, you know, you know what's getting ready to happen. Because they have a way of doing that. And again, sometimes that works to the benefit because you're getting, you know, the, the confession you need. Other times we end up seeing where this can lead to false confessions because people really don't know what they're giving away when they sign all that stuff and say, yeah, I'm going to talk to you without a lawyer. So we're going to just kind of go over some tidbits and things like that. So, you know, one thing that she mentioned was that she was planning to go to the, to UC University of Cincinnati to study developmental psychology and possibly working with kids. Now this obviously is like kind of a shock for people because you're just like, what? You know, <laughs> are you serious? But she already worked with kids at the YMCA and that comes up at one point later when he's like, you know, were you trained for CPR? Because I know it's essentially he's basically like I know you kind of have to be or whatever and uh, that was a very interesting point I have to keep pausing which I'll edit most of these out but there might be background noise because the wind is kicking up here and the only place I really have to film where I'm at right now is outside which it's a beautiful day other than that so we're gonna make it through though anyways so let's just talk about some of the things that they get into. So uh, like I just said, you know, she was going to go to school for that. She had already worked with kids and so on and so forth. Now they start getting into the doctor appointment and he basically establishes, okay, so, you know, you went there, you came out, your mother didn't know. And Skylar's like, you know, she confirms that. No, mom never knew about this. You know, and he starts asking her questions about like, well, what would the doctor say? And she's like, well, I didn't really listen to what the doctor said as far as timing goes. Cause they're trying to find that out. And I thought that was interesting that that's what she said because, I mean, I can see that where it's just like, okay, you just go into total like, this is what, you know what I mean? Um, so I can get that part. Now, one thing that's interesting also, she talks about where she kind of had an idea she was pregnant, her, her belly was big. Uh, you know, there was some talk about her menstrual cycle. So there was, you know, signs there going on. So she went there for birth control, but also to kind of find out if she was pregnant. Now, again, if her mother and all these people, you know, her parents and stuff are in control of these appointments, what I'm reading between those lines is, yeah, she probably wanted birth control. I mean, I think it's pretty much what it is. But obviously she can't tell her mom, well, I want to find out if I'm really pregnant or not. She she knew she was pregnant. I mean, she, she, she you know, suspected it, so on so forth to me and I'll get a little bit into this in a little bit more later to me this is a young lady who is living almost like in a prison and she is operating in the world that her parents have created for her and something like this that to a lot of people looks like well okay you suspected it now I get let me go in let me make sure that this is what it is I'll get a confirmation there's a certain level of, okay, but this doesn't just go away. And I think that's what's kind of shocking to people. But once we see that and talk about the interaction that her parents have with her, there's a little bit more understanding of, oh, <laughs> I get a lot more of where all this is coming from. So anyways, let's keep going. So on the note of her parents, I mean, she does say that she was scared to death to tell them, you know, that they would be so disappointed. And she reiterates this all throughout. You know, she doesn't want her mom to know. Yeah, but then she'll flip back to, oh, God, I should have told my mom. Oh, I can't tell my mom. And she's very manic during this whole period. So now the police officers, you know, they find out from her, you know, like, well, what did the doctor tell you? So on and so forth. And she lets them know, like, you know, yeah, I left there with instructions to come back for follow-ups. But I never called them back because I was scared. And I 100% believe that. I, I just, I think that she didn't call them back because she just literally was like, I'll just ignore it. I mean, there was this level of just, you know, I, I don't know what to do if my parents aren't telling me what to do. And she was way in over her head with something like this. And, and so that's where they get into the actual events, which was May 7th, she said. And she goes, she starts describing these events and, you know, basically right off the bat, just the same way that she it was when she came in with, am I being arrested? Is this happening? Am I going to jail? It's, I didn't kill her. And we'll talk about what I kind of think about that in a second, but they have her walk her through what happened. And essentially she's like, you know, uh, I, she goes into the cramping that we've discussed and this pain and all that. And so she knew, basically she felt like something had to come out. And so she went, she sat in the toilet and I think she said she pushed like one time and, you know, thinking maybe she had to go to the bathroom or something and the baby kind of plops out. And there's some talk of, did you catch it? And yeah, I tried to catch her. And 
there is some confusing talk because if especially if you see her bathroom i mean that area where the toilet to the wall is is kind of small in my opinion and the toilet isn't like a, i mean it's kind of your standard little toilet so i'm trying to envision how that would work with the baby coming out and not harming the baby in that way or how she caught it or whatever so if the baby plopped into the floor i don't know i'm not a hundred percent sure if what she said for that part made sense but again i don't know what it's like to give birth and i certainly don't know what it's like to go sit in the bathroom and a baby come out so if any of y'all have any idea of that that can shed light on it drop it like it's hot in the comments so now you know this is where she immediately says it wasn't breathing it didn't make any noise you know, she tried to catch her um she didn't make any sounds. She felt the baby's chest for a heartbeat. There was none. The eyes were closed. The cops are like, you know, what about the umbilical cord? Uh, there wasn't a cord attached to her. You know, what about the placenta, the stuff that comes out? And at first she said something like, oh, it came out the next day. Well, she said something like, yeah, it came out. Well, it came out the next day. And, and so there's a little bit of a, an oddness of well, what came out, like, she didn't know what the placenta was. And so, I mean, I don't either. You know, so there is this confusing thing of, like, saying something came out the next day but it sounded like also something came out at the time of the birth so there was that so but according to her you know there she never cut this umbilical cord and the baby essentially was dead i mean she is describing a, a dead baby essentially all throughout this though she's like i didn't mean to hurt her i didn't kill her so on and so forth and so she goes on and essentially you know she held the baby and held it for a while realizes it's dead and very quickly though she did this little thing where she was like i held the baby and buried it and she's just kind of blurting stuff out and the cops like well slow down or whatever and she's like well i held the baby and they have her walk through this process slowly and essentially she she swaddled the baby she took it downstairs she got a, a little shovel she took it out back she buried it she did it very shallow because she was in so much pain she said she had bled a lot whole nine yards so she buries the baby and puts like a little empty flower pot or whatever over the graveside and you know that's kind of that so obviously the cops are in total shock over this because number one like and again take out if we think that she's guilty of something or, not, or what like just pretend that's not happening right now the fact that an 18 year old girl is sitting here saying i gave birth in my home my parents slept through it my dog slept through it my brother slept through it no one heard me i then you know the baby was dead and i took it outside to the backyard and buried it i mean that's just like you're like what that sounds so horrifying and you're just it, it has it immediately raises so many questions like how did was that even possible i mean because they're all saying your parents didn't hear this everyone's having a hard time believing that she was able to stay quiet this whole time now all throughout this she's asking you know am i going to jail i didn't mean to kill her am i in trouble you know do you believe me things of this nature you know are you going to call the school that i'm going to in the fall I, I mean, you're just kind of like, you know, and here's the thing. So I go back and forth because I'm sitting here watching this. And again, this is before we're getting in, in this little video here, my discussion about the parents' reaction. And so we'll, th there's going to be a lot more about that. But watching it, at first you're just like, okay, wow, she is very concerned about being in trouble. Very concerned about going to jail. Very concerned about all these things. And, but then on the same note, you're listening to her, which obviously, like, when someone's that concerned with something, you're like, um... But then on the same note, you're listening to her, and she sounds so naive and so sheltered, and so I don't know really anything about the world yet. And, which, I mean, I'm not trying to fault her for that. It, it is what it is. So she fluctuates between almost like this person who's, like, really, really, like, say, emotionally, mentally young... And then a person where it's like, okay, are you trying to cover up? So this interview made me just flip back and forth between, like, I didn't know how to feel about it. I just, I did not know how to feel about it. I did know that she was incredibly scared. And the actions that she did, no matter, again, guilty, not guilty, doesn't matter, were shocking in that she did them. I mean, she pulled that off. She didn't tell anybody. I mean, I'm just like, how? I mean, I can't imagine. I cannot imagine. So now then the cops start getting a little bit more into it. And they're like, you know, did you ever talk about an abortion? And she's like, I would never. I mean, she had this human like, I would never. You know, and again, she probably comes from this like small town. Um, I mean, I, that's the vibe I 
I get, you know, there's a lot of like the family cares about image. Um, I don't know if they're a very religious family, but the vibe I got from her was, you know, abortion was just like, oh my God, no, you can't, you know, I would never do that type thing. So now at one point, the detective tells her that they're going to need to do a forensic investigation on her phone. Uh, he explains what that is. And, uh, you know, basically he's like, have you looked up how to have an abortion and things like that? Or, you know, think how to get rid of a baby, whatever. I forget what exactly he said, but he's essentially asking her, what kind of internet searches have you done? And she's like, look, I did look up, like, how to have an abortion without going to a doctor or something like that. Uh, but she's like, you know, that's it. And he's like, okay, now, he basically explains to her again, this is how this works. He, he uses his phone as an example and, like, him searching for stuff for building a house. And so he's like, how many searches are we going to see for this? And she's like, none, really. I didn't really... You know, I didn't really plan for anything. I didn't, I just looked into it a little bit, but I didn't really plan for anything. And honestly, I believe her when she says that. I'm like, that's what all of this just feels like to me. I don't think there was a lot of thought into it. I, I, a huge part of me honestly thinks that I have two questions. I honestly think that I'm like, I think she was just going to wait till this kid came and then. I don't know what she was going to do because the obvious question is, well, what if, what were you going to do if the baby was alive? You know, and a lot of people on our discord channel have asked that a lot of people in the comment section, the, the live trials are asking that. And I'm curious too, you know, and I don't know if they'll answer that. What was she going to do if the baby was alive? I could almost see her having hot, hidden it in her room, you know, and again, that's the, it, there's two trains of thought here. Did she kill the baby or did she not? You know, so right now she's trying to say, oh no, it was born dead. So, okay, you know, we're going to go with that for a second. You know, so then what were you going to do if the baby was alive? Because can you imagine she had this baby in the middle of the night, the next morning as a parent waking up and your daughter has a daughter? I mean, can you imagine? It would probably give me a heart attack. It would probably give me a heart attack at this point in life. It would probably give me a heart attack. You know, I'm just like, oh my gosh. So, uh, you know, I'm just, I, I was shocked over that. Please hold. So again, all through this testimony, all through this, not testimony, uh, interview, she's, I just adamantly, I did not do anything. She didn't do anything malicious to this child. That's her story. She's sticking to it. And so there's that. So then they talk about the doctors and this is where we start to see her talking about, well, no, I got, I went to the doctor and I got the birth control pills and I started taking them that same day. And you can see a little bit where they're just like, okay. And they're like, oh, did you take them all at one time? The cops are kind of looking for a self-abortion type situation. And she's like, no, I just started taking them. And to her, this was not odd. It was, you know, well, no, the doctor gave them to me. So, and that's going to be another thing we get into. And in just a second, we start talking about the father because that was a huge source of conversation with him. So now when, so Detective Fane, he gets up and leaves and leaves the female detective in there, which I thought was, you know, a, a wonderful move. Skylar all but jumps in her lap. I mean, she's just like, am I going to jail? What's he going to ask next? Is this almost over? I mean, she is petrified and she is looking for any kind of comfort anything and she's freaking out obviously i mean anybody would be like am i going to jail i mean whatever i get that she's so excessive about it that it's bizarre so i mean what that tells me regardless of how the whatever they find at the end of this trial i mean there's a sense of doing something wrong you know now granted it comes down to in her world is it well, no, I had the baby, it was dead, I buried it, is that wrong? You know, or is she hiding something sinister? Now, she starts talking about, you know, her parents and all that, and they're essentially telling her, yeah, well, your parents are out there, and they're going to love you, and this, that, and the other, and so on and so forth. And she, the female detective's on, she's like, you know, I mean, they're not happy. you got to understand, this is a shock. You know, this is a huge shock. So, but there, your parents are still going to love you. And honestly, after what we saw with the parents, I was like, I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. So that was interesting. So let's get into the parents coming in. So the detective is basically like, well, it's time for your parents to come in, talk to them, just be honest. And so the parents come in. This is something I'm always curious about. Why do people sit in the interrogation room and have full on conversations about the case? with it being recorded and everything. I mean, I get that it's a moment they're probably not thinking about that in that moment, but it's just a, a bit where I'm like, eh. So, but now their recording of what took place in there when the parents came in, 
I feel like is probably in a sense going to help Skylar. And one way I'll get to that, it sheds light on the relationship that they said we were going to see and the toxicity of it. So the father comes in, the mother comes in, a huge sense, right away, the mother. Kids get pregnant every day, you could have told us this. You had the perfect life. One of the first things out of the mother's mouth, you had the perfect life. And I was like, oh, we're starting off on that foot, okay. Not what I was expecting to come out of her mother's mouth, but okay. The father's in there. You know, you lied to us. You know, she is, so Skylar is scared to death. I mean, this is a confrontation that she was willing to hide a pregnancy over and may or may not have done some sinister things to a child to avoid. So, you know, this is huge. She keeps saying to her parents, I didn't kill the baby, I didn't harm the baby, that's my baby, I would never harm it, so on and so forth. You know, the, I had nothing to hide, I told them everything, you know. And there is a sense of, well, no, I told them everything, I told them the truth, why wouldn't they believe me that's the truth? So the parents, obviously, like any parent would, are at a ton of questions. You know, how'd you cut the umbilical cord? I didn't need to cut that. It didn't come out of me. There wasn't an umbilical cord. Was the cord wrapped around the neck? No. You know, and all through this, Skylar is apologizing. Do you still love me? You know, so hungry and desperate to know she's still loved, which I can understand that to a degree, um, but it goes to a level that just makes you wonder what was taking place in the household. So let's get into the discussion they have about the pills. The father, this comes up about the birth control pills. The father is beside himself, basically. He is asking her over and over, you went to the doctor's office and they gave you these pills? You know, yeah, yeah, you're sure? Yeah, yeah, they did. I just I just got them. I don't know what kind they are. You know, the, they filled them at the doctor's office. Now remember, Ashley, the medical assistant, said that Dr. Andrews canceled the, the prescription after she left or once they learned that she was pregnant or something like that. So it's like he wrote the prescription, but they made it sound like they canceled it within the same time period. Well, Skylar's adamant that, no, I got them. They told me to take them, and so I took them as I was told to, and they were just at the pharmacy, and da 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 da, da. So, I mean, and I, I didn't see any reason. I didn't feel like she was lying during that. So uh, that brings up a huge thing about the doctor's office. Now, is this to say that that's what called the stillborn? I mean, who knows? I mean, it doesn't seem like at that stage those were going to probably hurt the baby. I'm not a doctor, obviously, but this is just from what I've seen. But it brings up a huge thing if Dr. Andrews was telling the truth. And what could have happened is he might have canceled it, but it didn't go through soon enough. And so the prescription went through and she went and got it. It was just a crosswire type of thing. So during this, again, the father is shocked. The mother is shocked. And, you know, the father's going on about the pills, the doctor. And it almost becomes like a, a, a deterrent where it's like, okay, let's not forget what's going on here. You know what I mean? Like, it's not all the doctor. This isn't the doctor's fault. There's other actions that took place here. But nonetheless, I mean, I can see that being completely shocking. The next level of shock is that they can't believe that no one heard her. I mean, they're just like, you know, the dog didn't bark. We didn't wake up. And they kept saying, I can't believe we didn't wake up. The father did. I can't believe we didn't wake up. I can't either. I mean, granted, they were downstairs, but part of me is like, she was just determined. I mean, she she was so afraid of whatever, of that confrontation and, and whatnot, that she was determined. I'm more surprised the brother didn't wake up because it sounds like their rooms were across from each other. So, or, you know, are on the same floor. So that part's a little surprising to me. And that she cleaned up all this blood and all this stuff. I mean, that part's the moving around and stuff or that the dog didn't make a noise but who knows dogs are different so so this goes on and on and so then at one point because you know she's so concerned Skylar is so concerned about am I going home am I going to jail you know very concerned about this and at one point the mother just says you're never coming home again <laughs> and I took that to mean where she was like you know they are you're getting arrested you're never you're never coming home again not like she was kicking her out of the house type thing because Skylar all through this is you know will you still love me you know and I was so afraid of her parents rejection and for her mother to just like blurt that out and then her mother goes into what she's losing this interaction with the mother during that tells me so much about what's going on 
And so I'm like, well, this is why this girl's like this. This is why this girl probably has an eating disorder. I mean, who says that? And the father even, they start to bicker and the father jumps in and says, you know, don't y'all start this, you know, just stop. The mother is like reluctantly giving out because Skylar like requests it, please hold me, please be here for me. And the mother will give her a hand. The father moves around there eventually and puts his arm around her. You know, and he's like, we're going to always love you, but this is major. And he makes it clear, you've gotten yourself into trouble. We can't get you out of this. They could very well be taking you away. You know, and it's true. I mean, she doesn't understand the severity of what's going on. I think she starts to realize that when she's in this room. Um, so all that's going on. So, you know, this was my takeaway. And that's essentially what we're going to talk about. You know, the cops come back in. They talk about the search warrant. You know, what they're going to do. And da-da-da-da-da. They say that you're 90% you're not going to jail today. But we just have to make sure everything's, you know, kosher and on the up and up. And so that's, you know, where that goes. And once these interviews are over with, the judge dismisses the day. And they leave. They, they quit testimony pretty early for that day. So, you know, my thing watching it is a, a big takeaway. And again, doesn't matter guilt, not guilty. I was like, there's a lot of toxicity going on in this household. And Skylar knows how to operate and survive in that toxicity. However, she's learned how to do it. You know, whatever her mechanisms are, I don't know. But, you know, that's we all do that. And whatever our dysfunctions are, we figure out how to live with them and get around them. So that's what she's done. But part of that that I'm seeing is that she is so afraid of something with her parents, whether it's I'll not get any more scraps of love that they're willing to hand out, they'll cast me aside, whatever the case may be, I don't know. But she's so afraid of that that she was willing to hide this pregnancy and possibly, you know, a living baby. You know, so th the fact that she's willing to have gone through this whole thing, not told any that's major. To not have even had a best friend that you confided in, I mean, this is major. So for me, a lot of the answers, and not all of them, like, oh, we solved it, but a lot of like the, okay, with the eating disorder, with the secrecy, things of this nature, I see why after seeing the parents interact with her. You know, and again, I'm not trying to sit here and judge because any of us, if they put our family interactions on film for everyone, we would be like, oh gosh, that family operates like that. We all have our own thing. You know, I certainly do, so I get it. But just in the context of this case, to see, okay, I, I understand a little bit more where this is, is coming from. So, this has ended up being a long video. I apologize. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, I'm going to be going to go watch today's testimony. It's Friday. And see what happens. The second interrogation is going up today. And that's going to be very telling. I want to see how she acted in that. Did it look like she was being coerced what not because so far what I've seen of her is I'm like oh you could get this girl to say anything you wanted to so I want to see body language I want to continue to see if she obsessed with this am I going to jail am I going to jail am I going to jail because that that's a little bit alarming to me so that's it thank you very much for hanging out don't forget to check out my website it has lots more content there uh, all different fun things there so check that out thanks for supporting the channel I will talk to y'all later and that's it bye bye